What's going on guys? Welcome to my Walking Dead World Beyond Season 2 Episode 1. Uh, some weird episode name that they said what the episode was, or they said what it means in the episode. Uh, something with a K, uh, but I can't remember. It's it's uh, That's the name of the episode. Um, so this is a show that I think everybody hates, except for me, even though this episode wasn't really all that good. There were parts that propped it up, uh, but overall, um, I think it's going to get better, but this episode uh, wasn't for me. Oh, and also, they um, got rid of something that I absolutely loved last season, uh, the outro of music, right? Uh, that, that's probably what hurt the most. That's the biggest sin of this episode is uh, the, the outro melody or whatever, whenever the, uh, the uh, you know, the end credits play. Uh, they don't have a theme song. You know, they should have had this song for the theme song and for the outro. Because I looked this up on YouTube. I really liked it. It's just, just the melody. I loved it. It always got stuck in my head after uh, the episodes in uh, season one. Um, so, yeah, huge disappointment. Hopefully it comes back. Maybe it just didn't fit the tone for the ending. I don't know. Uh, but anyway, yeah, that's the biggest, biggest sin the show could commit for sure. Uh, so, anyway, so, absolutely, I think if we... We could all agree um, on one benefit of this show. I get everybody's, you know, gripes with it. But one thing that I think it does better than Fear and The Walking Dead is the visuals. And maybe that's because it's a shorter season run, so they got more money to throw at it. Um, you know, two seasons that are ten episodes apiece, I believe. I could be wrong. Um, but it's not 16, I don't believe, right? Uh, but just beautiful. Um, I know it's CGI, a lot of it. But the, the back, um, the, the whole city um, blowing up, Omaha, and then you get the huge walker herd coming in, you know, um, even, I don't know, just some of the scenes that aren't meant to be like big city um, panels and stuff. Uh, I, I made one of the thumbnails. Uh, I made the thumbnail for this video, uh, uh, you know, the, the big beautiful backdrop or whatever. Um, just, yeah, beautiful shots. Um, whenever Hope and the soldier are... I can't, I'm bad with names, um, uh, Tuck, are up on top of the, the city, and you see the sun just beaming through, you know, um, of the apocalyptic city, just absolutely beautiful all around, um, yeah, and whereas The Walking Dead is mostly just always in the woods, or Fear is, you know, now in like a desert wasteland type thing, Fallout looking area, I don't know, it's literally Fallout now because of the nuke that went off, right, but same old, same old visuals. Uh, whereas with this, like I said, we get some really beautiful stuff. Uh, so we get a walker whenever they're blowing up Omaha. That's, uh, like, a his face is irradiated or something. Maybe I didn't pay attention or it's a person that's crawling up like a walker. I was hoping that it was like an escape, like a lab experiment. I think that would be really cool to have some really messed up stuff happen to the people that they're experimenting on to try to cure the virus. Um, so I'm not sure if that's what, uh, what this person was or not. Maybe I just wasn't paying attention and that's not how, how it actually um, was supposed to be. But um, maybe we'll see more about what happened to that person who was crawling up or uh, or maybe I just missed whatever it was. Um, at the start, we get something that was kind of strange. Whenever the big, the loud helicopter lands on the roof, um, Hope and uh, what's her name, the, the Civic Republic lady, walk onto the uh, the building and the walker just comes out of nowhere. Like, how did they miss it? They were up on a helicopter where they had a nice view. And uh, and then it doesn't come out until they walk out, like, which was quieter than the helicopter. Just very strange. The walker just, whatever, appeared to have them do something, have something to do, badass to do before the credits or before the uh, title sequence came up. Um, so, yeah, it sucks at the start. You see that they're, I'm reading off notes, by the way. That's what I'm doing. It sucks at the start that they're going to delay the reuniting with the dad. Uh, you can already tell that they're going to do something, but at least they reunite at the end of the episode because I figured they'd drive it out even longer. Um, but yeah, basically Hope just went on a bullshit mission. It was the main meat of this episode, uh, which sucks. Um, that, that That's what we got because I didn't really care about Hope's story. She's my least favorite character, and... Uh, we didn't see any of the other characters really that I care about. I mean, we saw Felix. I like Felix pretty good. Iris is just okay, but I really like Silas. And even the kid with the who dresses up nice, I think he's okay, um, or he's pretty good. And yeah, just just pretty much most of the characters that I care about either weren't in this episode or they weren't the main meat of the story. Uh, let's see. 
I like the little transition that they do whenever Iris is flipping through the pages of the book and it transitions to the helicopter um, noise of the blades. That was good. Um, let's see. Oh, the, the black guy, uh, uh, Felix's boyfriend, kicks the box in the CRM truck to hear how empty it is. Uh, to determine that they were low on supplies, very, very strange, I think, that he just nudged it with his foot and was like, oh, yeah, this is this is lacking a few bags of potato chips, you know, very strange. Um, and then he was able to tell that all this stuff was from Omaha. Um, did it have property of Omaha written on it? Maybe I just wasn't paying attention. I don't know. Felix's tattoo, this isn't really something to review about the episode. It was just something I want to talk about. This tattoo is very fucking severe, isn't it? Didn't did they really have to pencil in like the whole? I guess they did color in the whole thing all around his arm. I don't know if the actor really has that tattoo, but how long does something like that take, and how painful is it or expensive? That's just just nuts. It's a nuts tattoo. I forget why it has it um, to begin with, but I know there was a reason. Um, so we get to see the CRM uh, is interesting with the deal that they make with the perimeter group. I believe is what they call it. They have a deal um, where they'll uh, the perimeter will keep all the walkers killed in the area if they will uh, um, ignore if they will lead people away from the CRM compound um, or something like that. They have some deal. They just made me wonder. Okay, so what was the deal that they made with Jadis's group? I guess to recruit people in exchange for supplies or something like that, right? Because um, of course the main reason I'm super interested in this show is because of its connection to Rick and, and The Walking Dead, of course. That's everybody, I think. Uh, but yeah, so it's always got me thinking back to Walking Dead instead of in the story itself, you know what I mean? Um, I like the, the black guy saying it like it is to Felix and uh, Iris especially about their chances of getting to the dad because with how high level this operation is, which I really like, you know, how big it does feel, um, the CRM group, but uh, he's like, yeah, there's no way we're making it. They're going to spot us from a mile away because for an operation this big, I'm sure they have patrols way out. You know what I mean? Um, so I like that he basically tells them that, what we've all been thinking, you know. Um, I have a note. This is Walker gets hope out of nowhere. Oh, yeah. Whenever she's in the school and that Walker that gives her the concussion. I, I know the one was like behind the glass, which was a, a jump scare, I guess, kind of cheap but whatever. But then that one walker just jumps from behind the curtain. Like, where the fuck was it? You know what I mean? A lot of a lot of that shit in this this episode. Um, so I put up the transitions and things. I was saying things were strange until you realize it's a hallucination, like the day to night transition. Um, whenever Hope's uh, on the ground, the hallucination stuff. I don't know. It just feels kind of cheap. But I get why they did it. I guess. But um. So obviously the, the director or the writer talks about it after the episode. You know, Candace, the girl that Hope sees, was meant to to show her what her fate would be, where she would just be somebody who turned out to be nobody because she was alone. But my thing that's so strange about them trying to persuade Hope and all this is, one, what is her job going to be, you know, that somebody isn't already doing for you at the CRM, like uh, like the dad, for instance, you know? What is Hope or Iris, their genius levels, even going to give you that you don't already have? You know what I mean? They've, they're have they teenagers. They've been through no schooling. Well, you know, not like any kind of college schooling or something like that. Um, so what 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 are they going to do? Let me know. What, what are they going to do? Tell me, you know, uh, for one. And then for two, the CRM lady is acting like, uh, um, she's acting like, Hope wants to just go and be alone, and she's not going to make it alone. Hope wants to leave to look for her sister and Felix and Silas. She wants to go be with people. She's not trying to be on her own. Uh, so it just, it just doesn't, it's just like, I, I don't know. It's just very strange. And it's also a very strange way that she says that Tuck wanted her to get there this way. Uh, and the whole point of the journey was to make Hope not such a hard ass. Um, but that didn't work, uh, so now they're trying to break her down in a different way. I'm just like, just use your dad as like leverage or something, bro. You're making, you're trying to change the unchangeable with this teenage kid, angsty kid. You know what I mean? Um, you know, she just let her fucking grow up. She's a teenager, man. You know, she's gonna be this way. Uh, and even if she wasn't this way, 
Uh, how useful is she really going to be to you? I don't know, but uh, hopefully we'll see. You know, is she she's got to be like, why are we following the story? Is she the one who's going to cure it all? Because I don't know how I feel about that, but at least it gives the story more of a purpose. But anyway, let's move on. Uh, uh, I like Tuck's line to um, to Hope about uh, whenever they're sitting um, by the bed and she's like, you know, we're just little pieces of a big overall thing, which that is how it feels, you know. I'm glad she brought that to light, um, you know, of this big thing that they're trying to do that's potentially going to save, you know, hundreds and hundreds of, of years of, of generations of people or whatever, you know, to keep the world going. Um, it is important. Oh, and I do like the concept, um, you know, in The Walking Dead, both shows we got herds, but they call them columns in this. And it's interesting that as the years goes on, it seems like the herds are getting bigger and bigger, you know. Uh, and I do think these columns are bigger than herds, and they can just, you know, apparently wipe out whole cities, of course, with the help of the CRM blowing down the walls or whatever they did. Uh, but it is kind of creepy to think that, you know, they, they were talking about roaming the whole continent and, um, and then the whole world, probably. Um, just a mega herd that nothing could stop. You know, it's a force of nature. You know, and I really like that that feeling. It's just a, it's just nature. You know, taking over, and they're trying to stop that. Um, oh, Iris's line to Felix about how um, taking risk is how we how we made it before. So that's how we're going to make it now. Talking about they left the the campus colony, and it was a risk, and we took it, and we made it. And now we need to take risks to go find our dad, and we'll make it somehow. That's just so stupid. Uh, it's just fucking stupid logic. I'm sorry. It just is. It's, it's you got lucky, and uh, you probably won't get that lucky again. So don't try it. I mean, that's just that's just common sense, right? Uh, I didn't like how Iris defeated the Commonwealth soldier. Or I keep saying Commonwealth. I feel I don't mean to. I mean to say CRM. I've been watching uh, Walking Dead, of course. Uh, so I want to say Commonwealth, but it's CRM. I didn't like how she defeated the CRM soldier, even though he was injured, uh, you know, uh, just because he's, he's it's a grown man in, a, in, in armor, and she's a little girl, uh, or she's not a little girl, she's a teenager, you know, it just, uh, just felt a little bit silly, but uh, whatever, he was injured, at least, right? And uh, I, I put this in here, crossbow discussion in The Walking Dead, of course, we all just look over it with Daryl at this point, but crossbows, I feel, are just very, they're silent, so they work for that. But I'm pretty sure none of them shoot more than once. You have to pull them back, and it's really hard to do. Um, so, you know, Daryl from The Walking Dead, he's, he's pretty lean, whatever. He can do it, but still, it's very impractical. Uh, and then she has a crossbow out there, too. Um, but, but whatever, it's a silent weapon that you can make. I'm just, I'm just talking about crossbows in The Walking Dead. Are kind of, I, I would never really want to use one. I'd rather use, like, a knife or something or a spear. Um, opposed to something that I could just shoot once. Maybe I'd carry it around, uh, but whatever. Anyway, um, yeah, it is dark that she killed the guy, I guess. That is pretty pretty huge for her, um, you know, being just a kid, her first kill, you know, and everything. Uh, so it is kind of dark that she went into it. I did not like her line here, though. She says, that's what you get. I'm like, oh, my God, that just, that just sounds bad, right? It just, I don't know, it just sounds like a very cheap line. Uh, a childish line, you know, very childish. And disappointingly enough, in the trailers, we saw that the whis the CRM people were wearing, it looked like they were wearing a whisper mask, but that's not the case. It looks like it is just something in um, in Iris's uh, dreams, um, because the CRM are getting blamed. The writer explains it at the end, but but whatever, it's a dream thing, so it makes sense. But uh, it would have been cool to see something that they were doing as well, but. Uh, Again, it seemed unrealistic. They would be have those masks and then another mask. Uh, so that's what that is about. And I did not like the writer's line uh, or what the writer said at the end. Uh, he said, uh, whenever we were thinking of what to do for this season, uh, whenever they had the commentary, it's kind of concerning because you never like to hear that a writer was just like, whenever the season comes, then he was thinking of what to do. You wanted to, him ideally to already have this shit planned out like back in season one maybe i'm just reading into too much of what he said i'm sure i am uh, but yeah so overall i do like the show i did like last season more than most people um but uh, this episode revolved around a dumb storyline with hope um and i think if you take that out and put something else in i would have liked it a lot more um a lot lot more but um 
because of that, yeah, this will probably end up being one of my least favorite episodes of the season. Then again, it did have cool visuals and things like that, um, which I hope that we continue to get and we didn't just get because this is in premiere. Um, but no, I, I think this will probably end up being one of my least favorites, and it'll just get better from here at least. So, um, but yeah, I don't want this video to go on too much longer, so let me know what you thought of the episode. And uh, yeah, I will see you in the next one.